Welcome to Design to Move, a weekly functional movement series reviewing common movement impairment syndromes, muscle imbalances, and injury cycles, and how to correct for them. Don't just exercise, but restore optimal movement. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Design to Move. My name is Ryan. This is Ryan. We're both movement specialists here at Fluid Health and Fitness. Today, we're going to talk to you about patella femoral maltracking or patella femoral syndrome. This has to do with your kneecap not staying where it belongs. So there's a lot of blogs out there, a lot of information floating around about how to solve this problem. Normally it's just a normal pain in the knee that people will feel on the top of their kneecap. Now, unfortunately, it's not as easy as just reducing the tension in the quadriceps like a lot of these blogs talk about. It has to do with the global biomechanical relationship from the foot all the way up to the hip. Today we're gonna to try to give you a brief description of the biomechanics of gait and how that impacts the knee. And so this will be a two-part series because it is a pretty big issue. So we're gonna give you a handful of exercises to help restore the function and biomechanics, and then we'll elaborate on that next week as well. So if you have more or more questions on the topic, you can reach out to us at admin at foodhealthandfitness.com. We'd love to give everybody free virtual assessments online. So make sure to take advantage of that. It is gonna be listed in the description below. And we do have a blog on the topic where we write more information on how this thing actually happens or breaks down. If you really wanna get into the meat and potatoes of it, it's in the description down there as well. And you'll notice to the side, we have a table of contents or if you want a condensed version of it at the very end. So take a look at that if you've already gone through this video and you just wanna get right to a tutorial. So on that note, let's get started. And thanks again for joining us. This is our mobility and release segment for the video. This is where we're gonna show you how to reduce the overactive or tight muscle groups in the body and the taut muscles. And this is actually what we're gonna be talking about, taut muscles today. They're gonna to be the vastus lateralis, uh, the adjoining fascia of the IT band, and the piriformis up at the hip. So let's get started. So the first muscle that we're gonna attack is called the vastus lateralis. This is the lateral most quad muscle that attaches the little hip bone called the trochanter to your kneecap. Now it assists with knee extension, but it also helps to keep the kneecap laterally positioned in its little groove called the trochlear groove. Now the problem is the mechanics of the foot oftentimes excessively pronate. It means that it goes out. So when the foot goes out, the lower approximation has to go in. So the tibial will roll in. Now the problem with that is that as the tibia rolls inward with the femur, it actually externally rotates. Now that actual lateral rotation of the tibia is basically supported by this big mechanism from your hip where your glutes and your TFL, the front muscle that attaches to your IT band, comes down and tries to decelerate that internal rotation. Now the problem with that is it creates way too much lateral torsion here and the muscle, the vastus lateralis, has to come around and grab the kneecap to help with that. Now that pisses it off and increases the tension on the IT band, it creates more compression and then it literally pulls the kneecap up and off. Now that compilation of pressure leads to a whole host of different issues, IT band tendinitis, patellofemoral femoral tracking, there's a whole lot of things going on there that this is going to actually impact. So today what we want to do is understand that there is a couple different mechanisms going on. This is a taut muscle. It's trying to decelerate internal rotation. And again, it's pulling up and creating compression at the knee. So what we're going to do is use a lacrosse ball. I also have a foam core ball that we can use as a substitute if it's too much or if you can't get the leverage necessary to get the muscle to release. But you'll see that Ryan has this little ball. He's going to first find out where that muscle is. Now it's a big wide muscle. The IT band is basically on top of it. And what you wanna do is bend the knee and feel behind your kneecap. And what you'll feel, or behind the knee, you'll feel this big tendon. If you bend your knee and turn your toe out, that's your bicep femoris tendon. Now that's again a landmark we're gonna use. Go up towards the middle of your, your leg and in there there's a little recess. You feel that? Okay. And if you go up just a little bit higher than that, you're going to feel that IT band, okay? But what you're going to do is trace that line underneath the IT band. You do not want to be directly on the IT band. We don't want to create tendonitis. You don't want to inflame that IT band. You just want to be right between it. Now, once you've found that, that's where that lacrosse ball is going to go. And you're going to leverage your body weight so that you can put weight into the ball and compress the muscle by pushing the muscle between the femur and the ball. Okay, so you got that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So he's got that little ball, and if it's too much pressure or you can't get your body weight enough onto it to actually get sufficient pressure, you could switch out to a broader ball or perhaps even stack a couple books or maybe even a mat underneath the ball to elevate it so you get more pressure because again, it'll be off the ground, okay? The weight of your leg will help to assist putting pressure into it. Now, once you've got that, what you're gonna do is turn your toe internally. Gotta make sure that the foot and the tibia rotate medially, again, away from the ground and you're gonna extend the knee a little bit. What that's gonna do is pull the IT, again, into tension, and pull the vastus lateralis into a little bit of a flexion, okay? Now when you do that, if the proteins that connect the IT band to the vastus lateralis are all gunked up, it's gonna to help to separate them. So then you're gonna release the knee, let it go back into a soft passive tone, and then sink into that vastus lateralis and see if you can get a deeper penetration of the muscle. The goal here is to again work through the layers of fascia that may have developed or the proteins that connect the IT band to the vastus lateralis, break it open so you get more freedom of that tissue bed so that the knee can track evenly and not be so laterally rotated again from either the vastus lateralis or the IT band attachment trying to decelerate the again internal rotation of the ankle. So does that make sense, right? Boom. Okay, so he's going through this knee extension and flexion a couple times, and he can start working his way up the length of that IT band, and as he gets to the middle of his quad, he's gonna change direction. So instead of going into extension, sorry bud, with the knee, with the internal rotation, he's gonna start to do some knee bending. And he can actually, again, like do a little bit of an internal rotation of the hip, or the femur. So he's gonna bend the knee, there you go. Keep the toe up and rotate it in. Now he's gonna breathe in as he does it, and breathe out as he extends, and then again, soften and sit to the ball. This is a pin and stretch technique. Remember, midway up the thigh, you're gonna start doing that, where again, you're gonna start bending the knee in the opposite direction. Big rule of thumb though, internal rotation of the tip. If you truly have some maltracking going on and pain is present, and it's just not again biomechanically offset, you're probably gonna to wanna to be careful of this because it will aggravate it if you don't orient the tibia internally. So again, be careful. And again, if there's ever pain present, especially for more than two or three days, you wanna go see a medical professional. They're gonna help you with the specifics of this. This is again, for more demonstration purposes, okay? So you got it right? Mm -hmm. Now again, this is a taut muscle. The muscle's coming around and it's basically decelerating the knee bending internally, okay? Because again, the foot's unstable. So another mechanism in that whole system are these external rotators at the femur, but up at the proximal attachment by the pelvis. Now, if your glutes were strong enough, they should be able to support it so that the femur doesn't dump in, even if the foot was weak, okay? Well, the problem with that is none of us have strong enough glutes, right? Okay. Most of us have some type of instability in the pelvis, which leads the glutes to being weak. Now what kicks in to help with that? Another external rotator called the piriformis. Now this is a smaller muscle that attaches the sacrum to that same trochanter, the one that the avastus lateralis attaches to. Now you can kind of see how that whole mechanism comes into work, right? So if I step forward and the muscle that attaches my pelvis or my sacrum to my trochanter starts to stretch as the leg dumps in, it starts to create extra pressure and rotation through the pelvis. So not only does this impact the knee, but it also impacts the quality of movement through your hips and into your spine. So again, another taut muscle being stretched in or out because of the compression based on that ankle. So what we wanna do is take that out as well so that the brain doesn't have to always use it. Okay, so we can get in and use the glue, which we're gonna do in the next segment. So Ryan's gonna take the ball. He's gonna find that trochanter, that little hip bone, it's not the pelvis, so don't mistake it as your pelvis, the ASIS or PSIS. You're down here, and you're gonna rotate your femur in and out, and you'll feel that little ball or that bone pivot. Feel that? Now, if you go medially, internally, and trace it, and push in, you'll feel a little bundle in there. And again, piriformis literally means pear. It tapers to the trochanter, then widens out as it comes into the sacrum, but it lays underneath your butt. So that means your butt has to stretch out. 
So in order to do that, you have to bring your leg up into flexion and turn it internally. So Ryan's gonna lift his right leg up over his left and he's controlling his wincing because huh. there's yeah. some pressure oh, there. Yeah. And this is one where you're gonna feel it. Now remember guys, this is a stretched muscle, it's taut. So it's already sensitive and that's why you're feeling this pretty dramatically. We don't have to beat up on this muscle a lot. Right, you'll notice that the tension in that muscle will let go. We're dealing with the taut muscles today, not the tight muscles. Again, very confusing, but if the pressure of the bones are going further than they should, they pull a muscle that holds it back into stretch, and that muscle becomes too dominant, too engaged. And we're trying to turn it down so that we can use the right muscles. So make sure again, that you only apply a gentle pressure. It shouldn't be wincing. It shouldn't be pain. There shouldn't be guarding with the motor impulse to guard or withdraw from it. If that goes on, it's gonna to wanna to flex back, okay? And you'll feel that because you're gonna clench. Your breath is gonna get really stifled, right? None of that, we don't wanna see any of that. We want it to be soft and relaxed. So once you get to that state, you can start again flossing and lengthening that muscle by drawing the leg internally, the opposite of its action and flexing it up to your chest. Okay, and then relax it, bring it down, and then maybe shift more weight into it, put a little more force into the ball, and see if you can sink and get a little deeper each time. I like to go through this about six to 10 times. Once you do, you'll notice that muscle's gonna to start to relax pretty quickly, and then we can move into our next segment. So again, vastus lateralis, go up the length of the IT band, not directly on the IT band, we're pretty, Pretty specific about this. Don't want to inflame that IT band. Again, if you have questions, reach out to us at minifluidhealthfitness.com or again, back into the piriformis. Sometimes people are unaware of where it's at. They'll mistake the medial fibers of the glute med or the anterior fibers of the glute med. They really won't go into the piriformis. Okay, so make sure to check us out. Or if you feel a tingling or a numbness going down the leg, get off of it. Okay, that's your sciatica nerve. We're gonna avoid that as well. So again, six to 10 breathing patterns. Go up the length of the leg, the glute, or the piriformis, and then we'll move into our next segment. This is the activation segment of the video. Here's where we're gonna show you where the traditionally underactive muscles come into play and how to isolate them. In this case, for patellofemoral maltracking, it has to do with the hip abductors and external rotators. We wanna make sure that that femur tracks evenly so that the screw hole mechanism of the knee is appropriate. So we're gonna show you how to isolate that. Moving into this activation, the details do count on this one as well. We recognize that the tension relationship, the compressive relationships of the IT band, plus the additional tension from a tight vastus lateralis is going to impact the quality of your movement and the way that your leg moves when it goes into flexion and extension. So Ryan, show him what a flexion extension looks like. Flexion is when his leg goes forward. Extension is when his leg comes back. Now, if we have tight quadricep muscles or IT band, there's a tendency that it's gonna come down. Remember, IT band means iliotibial tract, ilium, the hip bone, to the tibia, the lower portion of his leg. If that's tight, or the vasti, the lateralis is tight, what's it gonna do to the femur as he kicks his leg back? As it goes into stretch, the foot's gonna rotate. Now, the reason why we're having this pull on his foot is to give you a visual representation so you can see that the foot needs to be nice and level as you go through that flexion extension. Now, if he kicks forward and the tension of, again, his hamstrings or all those other lateral muscles that are trying to fight against that medial torsion from his foot are overused, that also could rotate his foot up. Now again, that's going to change the orientation of the tibia and again, the placement of the patella in that little trochlear groove. Remember, the patella attaches by a tendon down to that, that bone. So if it's twisted, it's going to want to pull it off. So once again, our goal here is to make sure that the leg mechanics are tracking evenly from the upper to the lower extremity as defined by a nice neutral foot or parallel to the floor. He's gonna bring it up into extension or back into flexion, excuse me. And then he's gonna kick back into extension, keeping that nice and straight. Now, if he does it, the pole will be parallel to the floor in relationship to the height of his pelvis. And he's not gonna move through his pelvis either. 
So if there's too much tension, either on the back side or the front side, his hip's gonna begin to move and he's gonna sway all over in his pelvis too. So you wanna avoid that. Don't let your hips rotate back or forward and don't let that foot fall to the floor. Now, he's probably burning out right now in his glute. Oh yeah. I've been talking a lot and I know he can feel it. Now he's a big guy, long levers, but he's got tons of muscle mass and yet he's still feeling a burnout, right? The weight of this pole is sufficient to kick that little glute's butt back here. And now he's not using his piriformis because we took that out with our release and activation, or release and mobility. So once again, we're gonna try to shoot for about 20 repetitions. Time under tension is gonna be about two minutes. You're gonna give yourself a minute recovery in between. You would hit both sides of the body. Even if you're not experiencing, again, patellofemoral maltracking on one leg, Believe me when I say you're gonna to wanna to hit both sides. This is how we keep our pelvis stable and how we keep our knees and ankles and feet healthy. So get after it and we'll get into our next segment. And this brings us to the integration portion of our video. Here's where we show you how to sequence the right muscle firing patterns through the body so that as you're moving through functional motion like walking or gait or cycling, the muscles fire in the right way. Today we're gonna to show you how to targate your vastus medialis oblique and adductors with your hip extensors, your gluteals, muscles that pull your leg back all together so that the knee tracks in the right way and we reduce that lateral pressure for the kneecap. Let's get started. So we're gonna get Ryan into basically a split stance position. You'll notice that we have a rubber band anchored to the wall just about the height of his knee. It's not directly at the height of his knee, it's just a little bit higher. Now what he has is a little a uh, towel behind his knee to help one cushion the, the tension from the band, but also to help it stay positioned just above on the femur. So the goal here is he's gonna teach his knee to go into extension as he draws his weight with his swing leg forward, keeping the foot mechanics, the ankle and the knee and hip uh, in the right line. So what we're gonna talk about is a couple different biomechanical terms here. One's called the Q angle, and then the one is uh, also has to do with the foot, so the foot progression angle. Now both of these angles are very important for the health of the knee. If the foot is too everted or rotated out, where it like kicks out to the side, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on the ankle to have to compensate for that and roll inward. Now normally that has to do with the flattening of the foot and not having sufficient strength in the muscles of the foot or the arch of the foot. So we're gonna first make sure that we keep our foot nice and domed by pulling our toes in towards our heel. And that's gonna create again, an engagement of the foot musculature that creates the arch. Now that's the number one thing. Second thing, hip progression or the Q angle. The Q angle has to do with the edge of the ilium or the hip bone, and then it's line tracking down to the middle of the tibia. Now if it's excessively inward, internally like so, so if the femur is rotated in too much, we know that again, there's gonna be lateral torsion on the tibia rotating outward. So that's gonna again, alter the way that the knee tracks and that's called the screw hole mechanism. So a couple things, we're gonna make sure the foot's nice and stable by maintaining the arch. We're gonna make sure that we don't let the femur rotate in too much by flexing our glute. So you're gonna co-contract or try to contract, engage the glute before we move. And then we're gonna center our weight by engaging our core. Breathe out and flex your abdominals. Then take your leg, bring it up, and swing it up and over your stance leg as you come into, again, another split stance position. Now he's gonna step back. Now the main thing here is that we're using this dynamic tension and that you can see here on the angle from the video, the band is slightly offset diagonally away from Ryan. So he's on his right leg, the band is slightly off to the right. And what we're using is an extra amount of dynamic force from the band to, again, work his extensors. So he's using his glute to pull his leg backward, this brace leg, his right leg, and it's subtly pulling it inward. Now, an important thing for the appropriate engagement of the muscles that help to support the tibia, this little guy called the vastus medialis oblique, that helps to hold the tibia immediately to offset that lateral torsion that we talked about. In order to really get that, the knee needs to get to full extension. Now it's very hard for the knee to extend fully if we have tight hamstrings, right? Or again, if we have hip flexor issues that keep our hip into a flexed state. So you may have limited mobility and due to which it's gonna be hard for you to get that knee to fully extend without seeing your foot start to even it out or flatten out. 
So if that's going on, you may want to reduce the range of motion, but ultimately the goal is to get that knee to get the full extension, hold your center of mass by maintaining a neutral pelvic alignment so the pelvis is parallel to the floor, step through your stride, and try not to let the heel come up off the ground on the braced leg. So once again, foot stable, full knee extension, pull the leg through, step through the position, engage your glute, and then repeat. Now all of this is gonna to help to engage your rotators of the femur, your glute medius, your glute maximus. It's gonna to help to engage your adductors of the femur on the backside, your long fibers like your madness. It's also gonna to help to engage your vastus medialis oblique to help to stabilize the tibia to reduce that lateral torsion. And finally, it's gonna hit the muscles of the foot to help to stabilize the arch of the foot. All these things have to happen together in order to maintain a nice neutral alignment through your leg to reduce that cue angle and to help the foot to, go, to keep that knee stable so that we don't get too much, again, external rotation from the tibia. So you're gonna do two sets, 20 repetitions. And you see how slow Ryan's going. He's making it very nice and very controlled. Just keeping his upright posture, heads in line with his torso, torsos are over his hips, drawing his weight through. He doesn't have a ton of tension, right? We shouldn't have any pain in the knee. There should never be any clicking or grinding. So if that's going on, make sure to stop. And again, you may want to get some medical assistance and meet with a physician if you're seeing that go on, okay? So two sets, 20 repetitions, a minute in between, do both sides, and then we'll get into our next set. And this brings us to our final segment, strength. Strength is all about overloading your tissues till they get to exhaustion so that we can create a hypertrophic effect in the muscle. What that really means is that the muscle gets stiffer. Now, certain muscles need to be stiffer, while other muscles need to be longer and more stretchy essentially. So overloading these muscles will actually help to sustain the right position of our joint centers. In this case, the patella, the tibia, and the femur. I want to do that with a hip extension movement using a weight. It's not going to be too heavy, so a 5, 10, or 15 pound weight at the max. And we'll show you how to do that right now. Let's get started. All right, final movement for the day. Ryan's down into a four-point position. He's going to be engaging the same mechanisms that we just did in our activation, but we're gonna isolate them. He's using a dumbbell to do that. So he's got his dumbbell tucked behind his knee. Now again, Ryan's a strong guy. He's using a 10 pound weight. That should give you a good understanding of what your weight range or intensity range should be. So no overdoing it. We want to have controlled movement for duration. And we will give you cues or expectations through this entire mo movement or exercise. So make sure to apply these. And if you start to distort from what's described, you're going to want to reduce load, maybe not even lift a weight. Okay. So just make that a point before we get started. So he's going to get into a nice neutral line, meaning his head's in line with his thoracic or his trunk and his pelvis, his sacrum. I could draw a straight line and he would be stacked. His arms are directly under his shoulders and he's supporting the health of his shoulder and making sure that his shoulders are slightly retracted. Now, being in this inverted position, his abdominals are already pre-engaged, that's gonna help. But we want you to focus a little more on that, so make sure that you breathe out, give your abs a little tug, hold your ribs down. It'll help to stabilize your shoulders, but also keep your hips in line. So the goal here is to move independently, one leg at a time. He's gonna go through his right leg He's gonna keep his knee bent, and as he lifts his leg behind him by engaging his glute, the leg goes back into extension. Now remember guys, if you have lateral issues through these mechanisms that we talked about today, you'll have a tendency to wanna to rotate the toe out, and the knee will rotate open and away from the body. We wanna engage the medials here, so we wanna get the groin on the back side. We want the toe to be internally rotated, and we want the leg to track back evenly with the hip line or slightly internally. Now, if I kick back so far that my back starts to go into excessive extension, so I'm showing what it looks like, you're also defeating the purpose because you're pulling your pelvis downward, reinforcing the same mechanism that turned your glute off in the first place, which led to this distortion with the patella mill tracking in the first place. So do not do that. Okay? You wanna make sure that the pelvis is neutral, it's stable. You can do that by co-contracting the back muscles and your abdominals together, get it nice and locked up, and then move the leg evenly in that socket with no displacement of the pelvis. Good indicator is if I put a ball right on the small of his back, there would be no rolling. It would be even, it would be parallel plumb. His hip line is neutral to the ground or parallel to the ground, perpendicular to his braced knee that's on the other side of the body. So we would go up nice and slow, 
Get to the point where you start to feel your hip want to drop down or extend through the back. Once you get to that top, if you notice your knee starts to rotate out, pull it in, hold it there for a moment, and then come down slowly and let your leg come down. If you're doing this right, you're gonna feel it back in the medial portion of your hamstring and your adductor magnus, and hopefully square right in the middle of your glute so you get your glute maximus at the same time, all of which are again gonna to help to stabilize your femur, keep your knee tracking in the right direction, and take off that extra pressure that, exerted, or that is exerted on the patella as it tries to compensate for all that medial torsion from the foot and the femur dumping in. So we're gonna do two sets again, standard 20 repetitions, give yourself a minute of time in between, make sure to do it nice and slow and controlled, take the load down if you notice that you can't contain it, and again, make sure you stay uh, consistent with this. So you're gonna to wanna to do this again a couple times a week, and again, if you do, you'll start to see a noticeable change in the positioning of your patella. And again, you'll start to see uh, reduced pain and pressure being exerted on that guy. So get after it, do both sides, and then that brings us to the end. Thanks again for joining us today, guys. This topic was on patella femoral maltracking. One more time, the issue has to do with the placement of the kneecap. And traditionally, it's because the quadricep muscles are too tight or the positioning of the femur and the tibia are not where they need to be because the muscles that are tasked to support their neutral alignment are not working appropriately. We show you how to reduce the overactive groups and this is just one of a couple different mechanisms that need to be addressed. We actually worked on the taut muscles, not the tight muscles. There is a difference and next week we'll talk more about that so make sure to keep your eyes open for next week's outline where we get into the tight muscles. If you have any questions on the topic, make sure to reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com and read the blog on the topic. We have lots of valuable information down there, so make sure to take a look at that. And if you want to schedule a free virtual consultation with one of us or one of the other movement specialists here at Fluid Health and Fitness, we would love to hear from you. Just reach out at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. As always, we end every segment by saying your body's designed to move, so stay in motion. So you guys get after it, and we'll see you next week for another episode.